Hi to all of you. I'm very glad to be uh, not here, but uh, at distance to teach you this course on geometric and numerical methods in optimal control. This is part one, and Olivier, donc Olivier, uh, will do the part two. Uh, so first disclaimer: this is uh, rather the numerical side, not the geometric one. And Olivier in uh, part two will uh, do the more geometric things in terms of Hamiltonian flow and shooting function and everything. And I suppose this is the most simple thing you will have. Uh, in this session, in these two weeks, and uh, well, maybe it is good to have simple things from time to time. Okay, so the outline is the following. We'll have uh, four, four parts, four short parts, one video for each. So the first one will be an optimal control of Udi's, just to recall the setting that we will use. The second part will be just a short discussion of what we will do during the hand-on session. We have some TP uh, travaux pratique, that is hand-on session, uh, of, um, I mean, two sessions uh, each of two hours. And the same will be true for the part two with Olivier uh, for the second part of the, of the course. And we will discuss just the Godard problem. I will say just a few words about this to motivate the kind of formulation I will introduce in section one. In section three, we will uh, just have a short refresher on Runge Kunta methods that we will use to discretize very simply an ODE system. And finally, I will try to give you some hints about how to do uh, yourself, in, uh, to some point, a uh, solver which can be used to solve uh, in terms of uh, rewriting as an optimization problem, an optimal control problem. So by direct, I just mean that we will have a direct transcription, a transformation of an optimal control problem into a mathematical, a mathematical programming problem an optimization problem in finite dimensions. So let, let us just go to the first section, uh, an optimal control of ODEs. So I will just try to highlight a few things. And uh, the PDF file of what is written here is also available on the web page of the course. <coughs> so the idea is to consider a dynamical system on RN. This could be uh, on a manifold uh, using coordinates. This doesn't make a big difference here which is parameterized by the control U. Okay, so U here is the control, which is in the right-hand side of this ODE, defined by F. So F will stand for the vector field, which is in the right-hand side. X is the state and U is the control. We have some final term TF, uh, which can be fixed or not. Okay. And we can also have some constraint on the control, meaning that U, is uh, a priori prescribed to live within some uh, capital set, uh, uh, some capital U uh, set, which is just a subset of Rm. So n is the dimension of uh, the state x, while m is the dimension of the control U. Usually we have some boundary conditions, for instance, given in the form that uh, the initial state is fixed, while we might have some uh, final target. Uh, capital XF for the final state. Clearly, I will consider the so-called Meyer setting, where the cost is not a Lagrange cost, but uh, where the cost depends on the final value of the state. Clearly, this has uh, only sense um, when uh, the final state is not completely fixed. Okay, so we'll assume that we have some degree of freedom on the final state. So, to be practical, I will assume that we have some parameterization of this capital uh, XF set that is on the target, meaning that in fact, what we have at hand is uh, are some boundary conditions that involve the final state, but maybe also the final term that can be free, okay? And I will assume for the sake of generality that indeed, we start from zero when the, I mean that the initial time can be zero or not. So T0 could be different from zero and free. So in general, I will assume that T0 and TF are free or can be free, and that x at t0 and at tf are not known. So the more general condition type that we'll look at is some boundary condition function b, okay, that goes from r times rn times r times rn into some rp, okay, when we have so uh, p boundary conditions involving at the same time not only the initial, not only sorry, the final, but also the initial conditions in terms of state and time. So P will be the corresponding dimension of this thing. So again, all the data that is involved 
in the thing is supposed to be smooth okay so meaning that function f and function b okay are smooth functions by smooth i just mean that uh, we have uh, at our disposal as many derivatives as we want to have okay the only thing that is not completely clear in the control setting is that there is one thing which is usually not smooth it is the control set u which is in general just a closed non-empty subset okay and the control of course has the nice habit to live on the boundary of u but i will assume uh, in a few minutes that i have some nice parameterization of the set u2 and at least in terms of uh, inequalities which is in fact fairly general for what we want to do now once you have to define the cost to be minimized so i will assume that we are in the so-called mayor form which means that as uh, i said before i do not have a lagrange cost but a cost which depends on the on the boundary values of the state only okay and clearly it is also it is always possible to go from lagrange formulation to the mayor one we'll just say a few things about this in a couple of minutes so this is g the function g smooth again which defines the final cost i mean the cost the mayor cost and uh, for such a problem, it is clear that we can state the maximum principle. So this uh, has been done, uh, I assume, in the courses by Laura or Francesca. And uh, the maximum principle is, in some sense, the building block of the so-called indirect methods, that is, shooting methods, that Olivier will tell you about in part two of this course. We will focus on the direct methods, that is, we will try to transform very simply our control problem in an optimization problem in finite dimension. So we will uh, allow for much more general constraints than uh, what we would have done if we would have uh, uh, chosen to talk about uh, indirect methods where there are some restrictions so that to be able to apply the maximum principle. Here, uh, such restrictions are not holding and we can really consider very general constraints, for instance, path constraints. So I will assume, for instance, that we have this kind of path constraint here. That is the state x and the control u. Uh, and the constraint may also depend on time t here. Okay. It's just uh, prescribed to live in uh, the set defined by uh, such a function c. Okay. And here, c is clearly a function from r times rn uh, times rm into some rq. It is a vector value, so these two inequalities have to be understood in the sense that, component-wisely, we will assume that we have some bounds, lower bounds, CL, and upper bounds, okay, for each component uh, of these inequalities. So what I mean by this uh, vector inequality is just that, component-wisely, we have the following thing, okay? For each i from 1 to q, where q is the vector dimension of the, of the codomain of the function c, Okay, such a scalar inequality hold for all i. Okay, so again, this is just a sequence, okay, a finite subset, a finite ensemble of standard inequalities in R. But here, so uh, written in short in RQ. A remark here on the regularity of the things we we'll look at. Clearly, the control is a priori uh, only a uh, very general measurable function. So, in general, it is supposed to be locally essentially bounded. Uh, for instance, so as to be able to state the maximum principle of Pontryagin. So, in accordance with this, the state is supposed to be an absolutely continuous function. Okay. Uh, that's why, clearly, the dynamical constraints and uh, any constraint that involves u has to be understood in the almost everywhere sense. This will not be a big issue when we discretize this, because we will just uh, make some very rough projection of, of all this stuff into a finite dimension that is uh, at col some collocation point on a finite grid of points of time. Okay, so all in all, what we have is essentially the following problem that we want to solve. We have a function g that we want to minimize, this is the cost. We have a dynamical system defined by f, okay? Again, this is uh, to be understood in the almost everywhere sense. And we have some, some box constraints. So I will even assume that we have some additional constraint on the state and the control in box form. That is, uh, we have some 
lower and upper bound on the x. Again, this is these are vector values and inequalities, and the same holds for u, plus some possibly mixing the state and the control x and u path constraints, okay, on both the control and the state, uh, in the form I previously mentioned. And to finish, we will assume, of course, that we have these boundary conditions here in the more general form, again, with a lower and upper bound. So this is, uh, from the optimization uh, in finite dimensional point of view, the more general kind of thing that one can write in terms of not equalities, but inequalities. Again, all the data G, F, C and B are smooth functions and we can differentiate them uh, as many times as we want. Note that we have added some dependence on the time, for instance, for the path constraints and also for the dynamics here, okay? And that, as I mentioned previously, they are box constraint everywhere, including, again, the state and the control. Just to finish this uh, very short uh, introduction to the setting of what we want to solve, just know that clearly one can go from Lagrange or even Bolsa form to the so-called Mayer form. For instance, if uh, one has some running cost defined by an integral of some running function f0, it is clearly transformed into a Mayer problem, donc from Lagrange to Mayer, just by adding an additional state, which is just x0, which verifies the dynamics defined by the integral f0. Okay, so in this sense, it is uh, not at all a uh, lack of generality to talk about Mayer. It is just very convenient because everything is contained in the dynamics in terms of dynamics, of course, and cost.